<laughs> anyway, oh. speaking of things, we were just, what were we talking about? The, um, him and the, oh, speaking about turning your back and going home. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this shit is. This, I want to close out with this, Craig. Mm-hmm. Just leave these people something to ponder on when they leave. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this shit is a skit. If this is a whatever, mm-hmm. whatnot. You feel me? I just know that this. It intrigued me, and if if it's a skit, I still want to treat it as if it was real, mm-hmm. just to get some some yeah. feedback from the ladies. We're gonna start at part one. Let's go. It's just something I don't condone, and I told him that I don't want nobody putting their hands on my daughter but me, because I'm the mother. So what makes you feel like you could do that? Understood. First off, it was something mutual between me and the father because your daughter was being disrespectful. Uh, she could. Okay, this is my thing. My daughter's not disrespectful, and even if she was disrespectful, I told him to not let nobody. No bitch, excuse me, but really not excuse me to put their hands on my daughter. Okay, at the end of the day, your daughter's not disrespectful to you because you're her mother and I guess the ways that she's learning, you're teaching her. However, baby, baby, what look, I'm look, trying to tell you it is gotta be that something that you said to her for her to even feel that it ain't okay. gonna be tolerated. Okay. Child's well, I'm gonna say this. We, we can't talk together. We've oh, seen we together, but we can't, can't talk, talk together. together. But what I'm telling you is valid and I'm gonna Okay, so why you let her put her hands on our daughter? Because you know, what you mean what I'm doing here? I'm checking your wife because she feel like she got authority to put her hands on my daughter. Let's stop it right there because first off, she was being disrespectful. How was she being disrespectful? Her, I gave her permission. Why didn't she, no, no, why didn't you discipline her? I'm not talking to you right now. Why didn't you discipline her? Because you the Cause, damn daddy. Because I wasn't here. Okay, well, next time, call me or something. Because I don't condone that. You need to speak to okay, me. Call I'm the one that birthed her because this is my daughter. He is. The, oh, but, if, exactly. but look, if he's not here to discipline her, then report? you need to wait. Because you, you just could have called me about this. You, you don't answer the phone. You don't answer the phone. And, and, and this is what I have to do to get through to y'all. If I got to pull up and add the fool to get through to y'all because y'all want to touch my child, this is what I'm going to do. It's my child too. Okay, but if you are there in the vicinity. you going to come in my house and try to act the fool? But you mean act the fool. You weren't here. So if you were not here, then how are you going to punish her? How are you going to do that? So that's not her right to do that. And I gave I'm her only permission one here, to. though, and she's under my authority at the time. She should be listening. Don't okay, you think? I'm not saying she should not listen, but let me tell you something. This is my daughter. I don't want you touching her. That's okay. point blank. Period. And, and if she so comes you back don't want to her me, coming over here because if she's gonna be disrespectful and cross the line, okay. Well, why are you not being a daddy and checking her then and making sure that she's respecting that her? I'm not doing it. Because she you just told me that you weren't. You weren't here when it happened. So if you're you not here when it happened, come back and tell you that daddy whooped me because I do. If she's disrespectful in my house, she's she going to get She told me that she's gonna get daddy's new no girlfriend who, who's touched in the me. House, if she That's what she told me. Daughter, Ain't nothing new she, about this. She, let me, let me Whew, know this. Okay, look. If she's please, under please, our handle guidance. Handle this, I swear to God, you know how I get. What? And what? I'm already what? up here. It don't matter. It's, it's my daughter, though. It's my daughter. And I ain't even really got to talk to you. We can definitely go there. Because I'm with that time. What? Listen to what? under my roof. She's going to get punished if he's being disrespectful. I'm not. Okay, look. I'm not saying she can't be punished, but she does not have to put her hands on my daughter. Call me and I will handle it or either teach her to be more respectful because she don't do that with me. She so that, that says something. So, where she's learning so that says something. Obviously you. Obviously you. Okay, she but if she's disrespecting y'all, then she's what sense does that make? What is you talking exactly about? Exactly, and she doesn't disrespect me. She disrespects y'all. So that you says something baby, about y'all's you're, parenting. You're to disrespect us, baby. baby, look, I, I'm going to tell you something. Okay. I'm not trying to come here with that shit. I'm really you not. But you need to calm all that down. Oh, but it's not your child. And all that shit that you with, I'm with it times 10. I'm with it times 10. I'm with it times 10. So calm that down. I will call you. And make sure you answer the phone. Make sure you answer the phone. You don't so have you to. Here, you can get it too. Like I said, don't touch my child no more, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. All right, and y'all can have a wonderful day, have a wonderful rainy day, and yes. how about your narrow ass answer the phone when I call next time? Right, yeah, I and I said what I said. Yeah, all right, all right, yeah, all right. All right. Bye. yeah, yeah, please. Um. All right. I was in a space. Now I don't know if this is real or fake, but we're gonna treat this as if. We're gonna talk about this as if this was if as if this were real. Because that was definitely given to me. It was given to me. Somebody said mm-hmm. it. somebody in the comments said he's an actor. Okay, it was if okay, but What's we scenario? let's just talk about this scenario. Okay. Now where I was lost at at the end when the mama when the when the stepmama said She got it. Your daughter could get it. You your daughter got it, you could get it too. Now that made me change my perspective because from the thing about it is it's just like okay, well if your daughter, what if your daughter going to this to her daddy house and he not there and she with the stepmama and she's showing her ass out because you done told her because I know women to be like fuck if you better cuss that hoe out when you go over there because here's the thing about 
Here's the thing about children. Children are always used in grown people's. They are, they're always pawns in grown people's grand uh, design of things. Mm -hmm. Men, I mean, women use children sometimes to trap men. Men use men use the excuse of they do the same thing, but they also use the excuse of not being the children because of the mama. It's so much that they use. Children are used as a pawn mm -hmm. in the grown people's scheme of things, and so. I have seen because I got girlfriends who got baby daddies who who use the children and still the connection there mm -hmm. and they don't like the baby daddy new person and be like fuck that hoe up bust that whole shit knock her TV and then for her to say well your your child was misbehaving while the daddy was gone here's the thing about it me as the as the as the new partner gonna tell the daddy uh-uh listen your daughter can't come up if you're not here your daughter can't come over here mm -hmm. that's how you i would nip that so instead of so instead of having her be in charge of his daughter bitch if you if your don't, don't your daughter can't if you're not at home with me and your daughter she can't, she can't come around here mm -hmm. simple as that she can't because I'm going to whoop her if she get out of motherfucking head. And you already know her mama don't like me because of you. Now, two. The daddy. Bitch, I know you for your works. Me and you argue about this whole when I was slipping off with this. Me and, this, me and you argue about my, my wife now because this bitch I was cheating on you with. So you already don't like this woman and you already I already know what this is. You want to stomp her anyway, but you know you using the daughter as an excuse. Because let's be cute ladies. Come on, let's be motherfucking real. All ladies, including the trainees too, they have had boyfriends and all this type of stuff. The first thing we're going to say, I'm not going to fight that hoe by him until this bitch disrespects something about me. Anything about me could be she could say whatever they could be fucking. I'm not gonna fight this whole by him because it ain't about him, you know what I'm saying? It's just by disrespecting me. And all it takes for a moment to be like, This you touch my child, I've been wanting to beat you up anyway. Or you said something to my child, I wanna beat you up anyway. Or you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not fighting her, I'm not fighting her over you when really and clearly it's most definitely that. What y'all say in the comment? Craig, what you say? So I agree with what you said. Um, I actually did a podcast a few years ago about this, and I had fathers on. And they these three fathers were interested in participating in their children's life. But in these scenarios, and it's not always the women, because sometimes these niggas be on that fuck shit too. Yes, when a that, lot. When that lady has moved on, and he's trying to make her life miserable, and any man that comes into her life, miserable but in this particular podcast um these three fathers they were trying to participate in their children's life but the mothers were making it so difficult and what that podcast taught me was sometimes these men become deadbeat i'm not saying that it's an excuse but sometimes these men become deadbeats because they just don't want to deal with your ass you know every time you call every time the father calls the, trying to talk to the child especially if the child doesn't have a phone of their own they got to talk to you first and you and they are arguing and carrying on about some foolishness so by the time they get to talk to the child they're exhausted and sometimes in these scenarios this one that i'm talking about sometimes the mother is still angry that the relationship ended and how it ended because he cheated and da da da, da. so she and, and don't let him move on first if the father moves on first, sometimes that makes that woman a little, even more angry. You know what I'm saying? But it happens in the reverse, too, because, again, I've seen fathers. I'm just speaking about a podcast that I did, but I have seen fathers who have done the same bullshit. My nephew was one of them. Oh. Child, that lady had moved on. He following her. He didn't put a tracking device in the car. and like It's like, son. I want to see my son. Right. Leave her alone. Let me see my son. Now, I don't know if that's what he said. But right. that's what it gives Tyrese. Let me see my son. Right. Where's right. my daughter? Right. So, it's just like let go. But when you bring these children into that, when pawns. you drag these they children, are all pawns. They, they be are pawns. And they carry that trauma with them. Well, I, I Those kids. So let's just say you're the father. 
you let's just say you guys have a partner, they have a ch they have a kid, and you guys and he's this person is not just going to be your partner. You guys, let's just say hypothetically, you guys are going to get married. If you're if you're married to this to your partner, they already and they already have a child. So when your their child comes over, and let's just say they, let's just say this scenario, they're being disrespectful. You tell them to do something, I do it. Do you believe that you should be able to discipline? Them? I go back to what, what Madison said. I don't want to be put in the position of disciplining your child so your child can't stay home with me. Mm -mm. Now, if I if I if we have a rapport and I have a rapport with the, the child's parent, you know, and we know who that child is, because sometimes people parents know who their children are. They do. And so if we have it just depends on the, the, the scenario. But if I don't think that your other parent is going to be okay with me saying anything to you. I don't, I'm not even talking about putting my hands on you. I'm just saying some parents don't even want you to discipline. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so if that's the case, then you need to stay home then. Right. That's why I said, like, I, I wouldn't, in this, in those cases, the dad should, the dad and the mom should both collectively agree to not have the daughter over until he's there, until he's able to be around his daughter. Because she's specifically there for her dad, not her stepmom. True. Mm -hmm. that's, true. that's his new wife that's not her mom right. so why the fuck do you got why is she over there and if and if you need to leave pack your daughter up in the car and drop her back off to her mama and i mean in real serious situations i don't right, mean right. in no situation where you just met somebody and you just no. started going out with them yeah. and then you think you're gonna come in here trying to no, and that's why I, that's why i said marriage that's why I yeah said you guys are married in that situation because if you guys are just boyfriend and girlfriend well he said in this video that, that well in this skit or whatever the fuck this is that that was his wife now so but again i'm gonna drop your daughter ass off off home wait somebody said if i feed it i discipline it <laughs> and, and that's the point i want to get to because if you have to take all the responsibility of when this child comes over you feed them you take them out you pay for stuff for them you do all of this stuff for them yeah they're still allowed to disrespect yeah them. okay but mo that you're correct but here's also on the flip side of that coin too there are there are step people who also alienate, especially if there are other children involved, who mm -hmm. treat them like you ain't none of my kid. Right, right. Who treat them? Kids can feel this way. Oh, absolutely. If they're with their other siblings, like if their dad has other kids, they can they can pick that shit up, like you know. Yeah. And be like, bitch, I feel some type of way in here. I know, bitch, why I got, why these two hoes got motherfucking juicy juice and I ain't got nothing. Bitch, I, bitch, I stopped speaking to my father for a while because he tried that shit with me. Bitch, he had married this other woman when I was in college, bitch. I was going into my freshman year. And um, he going to tell me that. So, to make a very long story short, when my, my parents divorced, my mom had it written in the divorce papers. Ladies, pay attention. When when my, when they divorced, my mother had it written in the divorce papers that that nigga had to send child support till I graduated college. Usually, child support ends at eighteen. Gladys Christine Stewart said, "No, I need it till twenty-two, or he graduates college, whichever one comes first. So on my eighteenth birthday, my father called my mother and said, "All right, well, this, this is my last because my my birthday is in May. The school year usually ends in June." My father called senior year in high school. All right, well, this is my last name. My mother said, you better turn to page seven, clause three, <laughs> because you got four more years, nigga. But when I tell you, he was furious, right? Uh. So he had remarried, and her children are older than me. So they had already gone to college and all this other good stuff. But when it was my turn to go to college, she wasn't for all of that. She had an issue with, um, she felt like she was helping to pay his child support. This is your stepmom. Uh, they're divorced now. Oh, I knew that bitch wasn't gonna stand a chance. <laughs> so they're divorced now. But I had to say to my father at one point because he want he came and picked me up. And again, I'm in college at this point. I'm freshman year, but I think I had come home for like a weekend or holiday or something. And I remember he came and picked me up, and we went for a drive. And he said. Um, yeah, I just need you to write a letter so I can take it to court. Because my mother and father, they were going back and forth to court. And he said, I just need you to write me a letter so I can take it to the judge to say, um, you don't need the child support. He said, I'm still going to send you the check. I just don't want to send it to her. Now, mind you, I'm in college at this point. This is freshman year. This nigga had been sending child support since I was in ninth grade. Mm -hmm. Now, magically, because he's married to this woman, he now has an issue with sending it to my mother. 
So it was all because my his wife was in his head. All of a sudden, he suddenly had an issue with sending it. So I noticed that the check no longer came from a bank that they shared because at the top of the check, it had his name and her name. Well, after she made such a fuss about it, he started sending the check from his own account and it was a different bank. And so that tore us apart for years, me and my dad. Like we didn't speak for a while when I was in college. And then I said to him, I said, one day the tables are going to turn and you're going to, I said, she may not always be your wife, but I will always be your son. Hi, Yadabo! Listen, you had you had said a word with that, and let me tell you something. How I know that Gladys is a true Libra. Uh huh. When you said, "Oh, nigga, you better flip to page for the fucking seven clause thirteen, bitch." That's Libra activity that's all right. day. She that said, that's vicious Libra activity. Oh yeah, because she, she I knew you weren't gonna read through those right, papers, and she knew <laughs> he was gonna think that his last payment was when I turned uh -huh. eighteen. I knew because we yeah. know because we because we. Know the future. Uh huh. <laughs> she said, "Oh yeah, I got something for your ass." We Libras know the future. Yeah, bitch. I knew you was the, and I knew you weren't gonna read that motherfucking paperwork, bitch. So that's why I page page seven clause thirteen. That, that's right. That's right. No, they big. You just wasn't gonna read it, and I knew you wasn't gonna read it because the spirit told me that. Come on, K Dot. K Dot said they would know this story if they read Craig's first book. I know that's right. That's right, bitch. That can be found where Craig where the writer Stewart dot com or Audible on Amazon or your e reader or wherever you get your books. Honey, Craig's books are no longer door knockers or door stoppers, bitch. They are bestsellers. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Everybody's buying a who bitch. Buying your book, Everybody, Craig? bitch. Craig, who buying your Everybody, book? bitch. Who buying your book, Everybody, Craig? bitch. Everybody's buying it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, that bitch said some crazy shit over here. Okay. Bitch, that shit was so yes, funny. Yes, indeed. Everybody's buying Everybody, it, bitch. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Girl, we don't get y'all four hours of our time. Yeah, we got to go. We got to get the fuck out of here. It's Sunday, bitch. We just ate that salad, but Sunday dinner is definitely waiting on me like Shantae's man waiting at home for Craig. No, anyway, I, I don't have no man. I said Shantae's man oh, okay. is waiting at home for Because communication <laughs> is our partner. Clarity is our friend. Communication is our partner. Clarity is our friend. You heard me say Shantae's man yeah. is waiting at home yeah. for Craig. Craig ain't got no man. <laughs> but Shantae's And I'm taking applications. Ah!